Today we're going inside the privacy engine for Shade. In the first video in this series, we saw how Shade Protocol keeps your data confidential using secret contracts. That was pretty high level and hopefully you were entertained. This video is gonna be different. This video is for the giga brains and it assumes that you already watched the first video but are still hungry like a wolf in a barren winter landscape. It's not enough for you to flip the light switch. You want to know how this stuff works. And I hope that this video enlightens you. Shade Protocol leverages the power of Secret Network. And this blockchain platform uses a technology called Trusted Execution Environments, or TEEs. And TEEs compute over encrypted data. A TEE is a piece of hardware. It's not a cryptographic solution like fully homomorphic encryption or zero knowledge proofs. So why is Secret using TEEs instead of other technologies? Well, the truth is all privacy solutions have trade-offs. And people who tell you that one privacy solution is the magic bullet are lying to you. You can check out this article uh, beyond ZK if you want to understand more about the trade-offs with respective technologies, but this is a nice summation here. Here's the TLDR though. Secrets mainnet launched in 2020 and up until this moment in 2024, TEEs are still the most comprehensive computational privacy solution that actually exists. It's here, it's non-theoretical, battle-hardened, it's scalable. TEEs are the best functional solution for privacy right now. And and put a few paragraphs in the description about the type of Intel chip that is used for TEE to help you think more about that if you're really wanting to do additional research. Let's talk about what happens when you hit the light switch, uh, metaphorically of course. What is the flow of activity for a transaction on Shade Protocol when you interact with a secret contract? Here's a picture of the user flow. The first step is that developers write and deploy secret contracts which are executed by the validators. I guess we could even think of this as step zero. You've got to have a contract to interact with. And it's important to remember that secret contracts have both public and private data. All of that is fully customizable. You could even call it programmable privacy. A secret contracts code is always deployed publicly on chain. So users and developers know exactly what code is going to be executed on submitted data. That's why the general ethos of open source is so important that again, developers and users can see the code, have it reviewed, verified, audited. Knowing the behavior and what the smart contract does is critical since that's going to be executed within the secure enclave of the TEE. After that, a user submits a transaction to the mempool. So they interact with that contract, which can include some encrypted data inputs. Let's realize here, even in this step with the mempool, this early moment in the user flow of transactions, this is where oblivious users get absolutely taken advantage of in traditional DeFi, completely unacceptably. And yet there's so much hand-waving that happens at the highest levels of transparent DeFi to try to make this be okay, to try to make people feel like they aren't being stolen from and, oh, this can be part of our protocol strategy, but it's theft. And it's good to remember Shade is, as a result of the tech, front running resistant. And that's so important to remember when you think about what's happening with transactions on Shade. So once that transaction is submitted to the mempool, then in the next step, a validator who pulls that transaction from the mempool and begins to validate it, they're receiving encrypted data from users and they execute on the secret contract. When contract executions are submitted with that encrypted data, it's important to know it can't be read by a developer. It can't be read by anyone observing the chain or anyone running a note. What happens next on secret contract execution? We'll give it as an analogy first and then kind of break down the basic concepts. But think of it this way. You put something secret inside of a black box and no one can see inside of that box. When it comes out of the black box, it's in a tiny little black package that can only be opened with a special key. That way, only the right person can see it. Of course, that's a bit simplistic. Here's what's happening in technical terms, though. Encrypted inputs, so if there is data that is encrypted, goes into that trusted execution environment, only in that TEE can it be decrypted. So read and write state from Tendermint, which is the consensus engine that we'll talk about in a second, that can be performed 
This state is always encrypted when at rest and it's only decrypted within the trusted execution environment. The last step of a secret contract execution is a TEE output. And so the block proposing validator then proposes a block containing the encrypted outputs and the updated encrypted state. In order to achieve consensus on this new updated state of the chain, at least two thirds of participating validators achieve consensus on the encrypted output and the state. As we mentioned, Secret, since it was built with Cosmos SDK, uses Tendermint, which is based on the Byzantine fault tolerance. If you wanna understand more about what this means, how it works, just check out these videos for a really understandable breakdown on Cosmos SDK, IBC, and how Secret leverages all of that. The last part of a transaction flow here is that the encrypted output in the state is committed to the chain. And there are various types of outputs that can take place as a result of that transaction, depending on what it was trying to do. An updated smart contract state that maybe now includes your liquidity added to the pool, or there could be a computational result that is encrypted only for the user, the person who initiated and submitted the transaction, or there could be callbacks to other contracts. Basically, if you're talking about conditional outcomes based on the relationship of one contract to another contract, that that is a potential outcome as a result of this new state of the chain. So that's a pretty detailed picture of the flow of privacy when you interact with a contract on Shade Protocol. In the last video of this series coming up next, we will shift gears and actually take this for a spin. We'll demo some of it. How much privacy do you get when doing DeFi on Shade and what is possible with this suite of tools? That's where we're going next and we'll see you in the next video.